So remember, the whole idea is we know what it's like when you differentiate something, you get the derivative. But when you try to go in the reverse direction, when you're trying to anti-differentiate, when you're trying to work out the primitive, not the derivative, right? It's a little bit different. Number one, I mean, the process is in reverse. And can I just make a note, right? Now that you know what differentiation is, and you will be going through this process of sort of reversing it, I just want to give you a heads up that they are very easy to confuse with each other, okay? And I promise, the vast majority of you, if you're normal, people like me, um, you will go through a period where you'll, you'll be answering a question and you'll be like, wait, which one am I doing, <laughs> right? And you will accidentally do one instead of the other. I just want you to pause every time, good morning. Pause every time you do one of these questions and say, okay, now which one am I doing? Therefore, which way do the powers go, right? When you're differentiating, and, and at the moment we're just dealing with polynomials, we'll get to trigonometric and, and exponentials and log functions later on. When you're dealing with exponentials, differentiating takes the power down, anti-differentiating takes the power up, okay? So, this is the first example that we looked at. So, let's just have a crack at this, right? Uh, very simple. I've got this guy, right? I know how to differentiate this. The derivative of this, which would give me, good morning, the second derivative would just be 2. Would just be 2, okay? But now I want to try and go in the opposite direction. So, I'm going to go through one term at a time, okay? So, firstly, I, I would say y equals, and when I have a look at this, those two steps that I'm after are raising the power, there it is, and then divide by whatever your new power is. Can I say that again? Make sure you divide by the new power. Don't do the division first. Okay, good morning. So, let's have a look. 2x, when I increase the power, which is currently 1, the new power will be x squared. So, this is 2x squared, and then I... Divide, divide right? Divide by 2. Okay, now you can see I have chosen 2x because you're like, I, I've seen this a lot of times before, and that those 2s are going to cancel, right? Um, you knew, in fact, hopefully, you recognized that what you differentiated to get 2x was just x squared. So very frequently, these 2s will just cancel out, okay? But watch out, you don't always, which is why I'm putting the 2s down so you see the cancelling happens explicitly, okay? So plus e. I'm not finished yet. Okay. So I've, I've morning, good morning, I've anti-differentiated this term. Just like when I differentiate, I go through term by term. If I anti-differentiate, I also go through term by term, okay? So this plus one here is going to become plus, well, I'm going to increase the power. What's the power on that term at the moment? Zero. It's x to the power of zero, isn't it? So that zero comes up to one. X to the one, and I divide by the new power, which is one, okay? Now I've dealt with all the terms, now I add my constant on, right, because this is all family of primitives, and being this, it's just, this pretty rule just come out of nowhere, you know, a wild C appeared, okay? I should state, I should state, hey, this is a, um, this is a number. That's it, I'm finished, okay? So, we see that, just like the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, the antiderivative, the primitive of a sum, is the sum of the primitives of each one. Okay, question. So if there's two constants, like when you like say one over x to the power, like one yep. over x, like that, and yep. then you have like one plus c or just c in general. Okay, I'm so glad you asked that question. Great question to ask. Because, um, and this is really helpful, because it'll, it'll start to get at what, what is this thing at the end here, right? Um, very astutely I've noticed, right? I anti-differentiated both of these pieces. So you would expect that I get a constant for each of those pieces, okay? So I could say, kind of, look, I should get a constant, sorry, should get a constant for this one, I'll call it constant one. And then I should get a constant for this one, I'll, I'll call it constant two. However, being that they are both constants, they're just numbers, when you add together two constants, unsurprisingly, you get a constant, right? So in fact, Good morning. There can be any number of terms here, right? Any number of terms, any number of little constants that comes with each one. But when you put them all in a big pile, they are all still really one big constant. Does that make sense? So glad you pointed that out because you're quite right. Um, I have a differentiate each one, so they really should be one each along the way. But I can put them together in a pile. Okay. Okay. Now the um, the very natural extension out of this, which is what we didn't get to look at yesterday, is. This is a whole family of primitives, okay? And really quickly, I should, I should just simplify that. x squared plus x plus c, okay? 
Just like we did yesterday, can we just briefly draw this? Can we briefly draw? This is a family of different graphs. So for example, one of the graphs that's in this family is just x squared plus x, where the constant is zero. Okay? And we know what x squared plus x looks like. It has, um, it has two intercepts, namely zero, zero and minus. negative one, okay? because um, I would factorize out the x there. So there's my zero and my negative one. Okay? So let, let's quickly draw that one. So zero and negative one. And then there's a parabola going through here. Okay? There you go. So this is just where the constant is zero. But as we know, there's all the other members of the family where the constants could be one or two or negative 100 or things like that. Okay? Now, just drawing these guys in, having the whole family in the picture is actually very helpful. Okay. At the moment, at the moment, at this line here, at that line, I don't know which one of these is the actual primitive. It really can be any of them. However, if I get a little bit of extra information, if I know not just what the graph's derivative is, here's the derivative, find the actual function. If I know a single point that the original function passes through, for instance, suppose I know that the function passes through there, okay? I no longer have a family of primitives as options, right? There's only a single member of this whole family that passes through that one point, because all the other ones will be too high or they'll be too low. Does that make sense? So if I know a point that this guy passes through, I can go past there being an, uh, a whole family of primitives. I can get the actual primitive, the one that it came from, that unique one. Okay? So for instance, just as an extension of this, okay, so maybe we'll call this one part one. Okay? If in part two I know, okay, given that uh, y, that function of x, okay, that guy, the primitive that we ended up with, Given that that passes through, and I'll just give you an example. You can literally pick almost anything, okay? Um, the example I'm picking is passes through this point, negative 2, comma 5, right? Now you can find the actual unique primitive, right? Okay. How are we going to do this? Well, the first step remains the same, okay? You would have had to have anti-differentiated that, and then ta-da, I've got a whole family, okay? So this is what y is equal to. Now what this is good morning. What this amounts to is, um, what's the value of the constant? Like I don't know what it is, but I could find out. Finding out the value of the constant corresponds to finding out which primitive am I up to. Okay. So I'm going to use this information to solve for c. That's, that's what I'm after. Okay. So how will I do that? How can this information help me find out this guy? Yeah, very good. I'm going to substitute it right back into this guy because. That will turn these two into numbers, this into a number, and then C will just be the remaining primitive I can solve for it. So let's do that, shall we? Um, I'll go back over here. So y is equal to x squared plus x plus C. So I'm just going to do a straight substitution. I've got 5 for y. I've got negative 2 squared plus negative 2 plus C. So you can see I'm going to solve for this, right? What am I going to get over here on the right-hand side? That's... 4 minus 2, which is 2. <coughs> okay, so just canceling everything out, I get a constant of 3. Right? Now I'm not finished, I'm going to use that and I'm going to bring it back into what y actually is. Right? That's the answer I'm looking for. The constant is just the means to an end. Right? So now I can say, therefore, y equals x squared plus x plus that particular constant. Now I know which primitive I'm after, right? It's, uh, well, uh, if I call that three, okay? There you go, that's the one I want. And the rest of them are irrelevant, right? They, they, none of them are gonna pass through this particular point that has been named, okay? And just because I got lucky, I don't know, we'll call that minus two, five. <coughs> there you go, done. All right, now I want you to have some time to work with this idea, particularly because, like I said, you kind of have to mentally shift gears a little bit. You're like, wait, I'm so used to turning, you know, x, x cubed into 3x squared, right? x cubed is not going to turn into 3x squared if it's the derivative, right? What's going to happen? Just quickly rehearse with me, right? I'm going to increase the power. 
Sorry. So it becomes four, and then I'm going to divide, right? Plus my constant. Okay. So you need to get used to this mentorship thing. It's not complicated. Like it's not any harder than what you did before. It's just your so your brain's in a particular track. So you've got to now learn to be a bit more flexible.